Come on, come on, stand on your feet and... Oh, we need him to fall fresh on us this morning. How many need him to fall fresh on you because we serve a mighty God. We serve an awesome God. Lord, let your spirit fall fresh on me. Fall down on me. God, we worship you this morning. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just good to be here. Amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. We thank God for each of you name by name. It is again the Lord has allowed us to come back into the house of worship, allowed us to where you are to be able to reach us uh, by technology, and we thank God for that. God bless you. This morning, we thank God that he has kept us alive. Just another day, the Lord has kept me and has, has kept you alive. It, it, isn't it wonderful just to see each other? Amen, amen, amen. Thank God for the praise team and the beautiful selection. Thank God for the musicians. Thank God for each of you, name by name, and have your Bibles this morning. We would like to turn that Bible to John chapter 11, verses 20 through 23. John chapter 11, verses 20 through 23. Have it say amen. Would you stand just to indulge with me for a moment, if, if you would, for the reading of the word. Then Martha... As soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. I, I, I want to talk about this morning. Don't give up on God. Coming up out of a dead situation is my subtopic. Don't give up on God. Coming up out of a dead situation. Can you say amen? amen? You may be seated in the presence of God. It, it is a time and place now where we are challenged to maintain our faith. Your faith is being tried. I remember in the book of Jude, he said, there are certain ones have crept in and stole the faith that was once delivered to the saints. The devil want to steal your faith. This is a time where you have to maintain your faith. Don't lose hope. The devil will cause you to lose hope. He will cause you to lose hope. Don't lose your hope. Because without hope, we're all miserable. We, we, we are here this morning because of the fact that many of us have held on, but sometimes we're holding on, but some of the things that we desire in life, some of the things that we were looking for and we were praying for, we have given up on. Don't give up. If you've been praying about it, though it hadn't come, don't give up on God. If it doesn't come today, don't give up on God. If I have to wait 20 years, and if it's for my good, I will not give up on God. Don't give up on God. Because sometimes the thing that you've been hoping and you think is dead, but how many know God can bring back a dead situation 
what you think is dead, God can bring it back to life. You just have to get to the point to where you don't give up. Many people I see today that had dreams and visions and, and they knew God. They said, I know God told me, but I, I don't believe it's coming to pass. Have lost hope. They're ready to throw in the towel. Stop by to tell you, don't give up. Don't give in. Maintain your faith. You serve a God of the impossible. Whatever you think is impossible, it's possible with God. The devil trying to tell you it won't happen, it will happen. As long as you don't give up. Ain't God all right? Yes, yes, yes. There's a reason, number one, as to why you're going through. There's a reason for you going through what you're going through with. Because God is trying to strengthen your faith. God has a plan for your life. God has it already planned out. And he knows that in order for you to get there and be the kind of person he wants you to be in his kingdom, he has to build you up. And the only way for you to be built up, you have to go through what you're going through with. And if you don't go through it, it's just like when you don't graduate from high school. It's hard to be successful when you don't get your education. Hallelujah. Ain't God all right? Let, let, let me tell you, you have to go through to strengthen yourself. I remember reading this story of this man went to God and God spoke to him plainly and said I, I want you my brother to take right out there there's a big old stone I want you to push it I want you to push on that stone that man pushed on that stone day by day every day he go out and he push on that stone five o'clock he come home go to sleep, so finally kept pushing on that stone and one day the devil began to speak to him. Man, you gotta be stupid. Pushing on that stone. You hadn't moved it, you're wasting your time. What are you doing? He began to listen a little bit to the devil. But he made up his mind that next morning, said I'm still going back out there and and keep pushing on it. Went back out there the next morning and pushed it and pushed it. One night he was lying in his bed and he finally began to say, I'm going to God in prayer. I want to talk to the Lord about this. God, you done told me to push this stone over and over and over. I can't move it, but you keep telling me to push it. I've, I've had no success on this stone. He said, yes, I told you. You're directly right. You're 100% sure I told you to push it. I never told you to move the stone. I just told you to push it. And no, 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 I want you to look at your body. Look in the mirror. Look at your muscles. How big and strong you've gotten. Look at the calves. Your legs are stronger. Your chest is built up. I was strengthening you through this. I didn't tell you to move the stone. I was building you when you didn't know I was building you. When the devil was telling you to stop doing what you was doing, I was building you. Don't let the devil <laughs> make you lose hope in what God has placed you to do. He's strengthening you. And when, he, when you get through that thing, he's going to settle to you. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So don't think it's strange concerning the fiery trial you find yourself in. Though some strange thing that happened to you. Oh, yeah, it's common. It happened to all of us. We all go through stuff. We all have to learn how to maintain our faith. I don't care how hard it seems, you have to maintain. You wake up in the morning, you have to speak and encourage your own self. Tell yourself everything. It's going to be all right. Tell yourself the Lord will make a way. Tell yourself it will get better. Things are be, be, it's going to be better. Tell yourself when you see me again, 
you won't see the same person you see now. I'm going to be bigger. I'm going to be stronger. I'm going to be better than I ever was before. Somebody shout glory right now. Oh, Lord, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're looking at a bodybuilder. Uh, I, he got me pushing right now. Oh, yes, oh, yes, he got me pushing right now. And sometimes it seems like what he got me pushing, I, I can't move it, but guess what? I, I'm still pushing on it. Somebody said, push, push, push. It's going to make you better. When you feel like you can't move, keep on pushing your way. When you feel like when you don't feel like coming, come anyway. Push your way. Somebody says it's gonna make you better. So there's a reason why you're going through what you're going through with. He's strengthening you. And let me tell you this: it's almost. Somebody shout! It's almost over. Your waiting is almost over. Oh, y'all don't hear me. I said your waiting is almost over. Somebody been waiting on something. It's almost over. Right now, as I speak, there's some yokes being destroyed. As I speak, there's some bound up situation that's getting loose right now. As I speak, somebody who's been writing checks and you was expecting some money to come in, but the money ain't got there yet. Come on, you in the financial turmoil. As I speak, the waiting is over. Somebody shout, the waiting is almost over. Come on, shout it real loud, the waiting is almost over. You've been praying for those children. The waiting is almost over. God is doing something right now in the middle of your waiting in the midst of this service God is moving on your behalf you've been praying for him and praying for him it's almost over you ought to shout right that's a moment to shout it's almost over oh hallelujah somebody tell God thank you right now you're waiting you've been praying a long time songwriter said waiting for God to move you better get ready. God is moving right now. God is working on your behalf right now. You've been fasting. You've been praying. You've been laying before God. You've been talking to God. You've been crying at night. But your waiting is almost over. God says he knows what you've been doing. You've been giving. You've been gone, going above and beyond. Helping somebody else. God said he knows. He knows. He sees you. He knows everything about you. He hadn't given up on you. You just can't give up on him. He's going to come through for you, but at the same time, he's working on you. I'm glad he worked on me. I, sometimes I used to wonder why you ain't giving me this and you ain't giving me that. I found out I would have messed it up then. I got more sense now. I was crazy. Didn't know I was crazy. He saved me from me. Come on, somebody. God's provision is your protection. Ain't God all right? Somebody shout glory. Yes, 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 yes. He said, don't give up. There's a reason for your delay in this breakthrough. There's a reason for that slow release. Sometimes it's a slow release. There's a reason for that. I want you to tell your neighbor, don't give up on God. Come on, shout it real loud. Don't give up on God. Oh, yes. Number three, he's always on time. How many know he's always on time? I, I, I used to hear uh, the old folk used to say he may not come when you want him, but he, he's always on time. And, and I always said, well, he, he will come. No, no, there's sometimes the time you think is on time ain't on time. The time that he has planned for you is on time. He, he will never leave you nor forsake you. He, he's always going to come through, but it's going to be at the right time, the right moment, in the right phase of your life. He's going to come through for you in the midst of when you really, really have come to the place to where you can handle it. Come on. He's going to come through for you when you come of that situation. Some situations you can handle now, he comes through just like that. Oh, ain't God all right. 
Oh, yeah, he, sometimes your healing, he'll come through just like that because he knows you'll thank God for it. I thank God I'm healed. I didn't want to die. Ain't God all right? But there's some things in life he waits, and he waits until you are ready because you are his child. He don't want you to mess up because he, he want to keep you in the hollow of his hand. He loves you so much, he chastises you. He loves you. He chastises you. He keeps you on the right path. No one, he said, he makes me to lie down. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. He makes, it ain't I want to lay down all the time. But he makes me. He makes me lie down in them green pastures. See, the green pastures for me sometimes is just to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. See, sometimes the green pastor for people thinking green pastor, I got to get this and I got to, sometimes it's just staying where God wants you to be. That's the green pastor for you. That's where you nourish that. That's where you are eating. That's where you are growing. That's where you are <laughs> being nurtured. God says he makes me. David said he makes me to lie down. Sometimes I want to run. I want it now. We live in a society where we want instant stuff. But we don't even want to cook. Let me drive through a line. Hand it out my window. Already done. If the line too long, we go to the next place. I, I ain't ready to wait on this. Ain't God all right? McDonald's, I, was, I, had, I had a taste for McDonald's, but I'm not waiting on it. The Burger King have a shorter line. I'm going to Burger King. Burger King crowded, I'm going to Wendy's. Come on. Well, I forget a hamburger today. I take chicken. Kentucky ain't got nobody. Ain't God all right. Hallelujah. He, 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 we, we just can't wait. We got to learn how to wait on him. We got to learn how to maintain our faith. If it's a hamburger you want, stay in line. Come on, somebody. Put some gospel music on. Stay there. Somebody shaking their head said, no, I ain't standing no line for no hamburger. That's why I said, then God will teach you how to make your own then. See, sometimes God make you wait on stuff. Some things you can do for yourself. You wait for other folks to do for you, do it for yourself. Ain't God all right? You waiting and waiting, and he already got it fixed. It's at your house. It's in the freezer. You just didn't want to throw it out. <laughs> I said throw it out, not deep throw. The old folks said it got to get thawed out. It's been in there so long, it's got to get thawed out. Ain't God all right. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, he's always on time. This is how we get some time working on this Christian journey that leads me to my story. And this is a very familiar story, but it, 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 it adds everything that we need here. In, 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 in that fourth verse, in that same chapter 11, Jesus said, Lazarus had gotten sick but Jesus said this sickness is not unto death this sickness is not unto death L let me tell you your situation is not to your demise you're not going down through this whatever you're going through you're not going down whatever is going on in your life it is not for you to go down whatever has happened it is not for you to go down it is to be on you. He said, it is not unto death. But then now, let me, let me fast forward this thing. Here he is. They have told him his friend Lazarus is sick. But he goes on about his work. He goes on down to another place. And all of a sudden, he'd been down there a while. And dies was after four days. They said, your friend Lazarus has died. Ain't God all right? A death, a dead situation. Here it is, his friend. It's a dead situation. But here, let's fast forward. He's coming back to Bethany. Here he is on his way. But here Martha come running in verse 10. She come running to him and says to her, he says to him, oh, master, if you had been here, 
he would not have died. If you had been here, he wouldn't have died. Jesus says to her, Lazarus, he arise again. Ain't God all right? Says to her, I am the resurrection. In other words, it's not over. I'm still here. But she says, uh, you know, I, I understand. I understand that. I understand that. But I know he's going to rise in that last day in that resurrection. But he said, I am the resurrection. Thy brother shall rise again. But then, then, then this is where your faith get tested. This is where my next point is. This is where your faith being tested. She runs. She runs home. And she go get Mary. Mary, the master, is calling for you. The people came behind Mary. All the servants and everything out of the house ran behind Mary, thinking that she's going to the tomb of Lazarus to weep, that she goes to weep at the tomb. You know, some people have already counted, counted you out. They think you're going to be crying about that same situation over and over and over and over. They think you're going to always de be depressed because they heard. They heard you had a dead situation in your life. And they're running behind you to see you go weak. They're running behind you to see you moaning and groaning. She goes to the tomb. But as it was coming, she meets Jesus in the same place Martha met him. So, oh, if you'd have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And same thing. You, he says, Mary was coming where Jesus was and saw him. She fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Oh, if thou had been here, my brother, he wouldn't have died. I just needed you to be here. Let me tell you, some, some people don't know. I don't care if he's seen like he's in heaven, he's right there. He's still God. He's still God. This is an awesome God you serve. When you can't feel him, he's still working. When you can't see him, he's still working. He's, she's, she's saying the same thing. And then he began to grieve. He groaned, the Bible said, in his spirit. And many people have said he may be groaned because of their lack of faith. Some have said he groaned because he loved Larry so much. And he did say that later on in the scripture. Oh, how he loved him. Some of them said, oh, how he loved him. But either way, it groaned, made him groan. Even that your lack of faith makes him groan. By this time, you ought to believe that I am the son of the living God, that I can do all things if you believe me. Ain't God all right? He's telling her, I can do all things if you believe me. He groaned in his spirit. He cried because he loved Lazarus and then because they didn't have no faith. He said, I'm still the resurrection. And they thinking, and you know what happens many times. This is the testing point because she's saying he'll, he'll rise again in that day, but not knowing God can resurrect some stuff right here in this life. See, God can do some things in this life. See, a lot of people singing, boy, when I get to heaven, I'm going to sing and shout. God wants you to sing and shout down here too. Some folks are saying, I'm going to have joy and peace when I get over there. God said he can resurrect some joy and peace right here on this side of glory. When I get over there, there will be no sickness. God will heal you on this side of glory. He said, I know you're going to do it on that day, but he said, I am the resurrection right now. You need me every day. You, you need me until you get there. Ain't God all right? You got to sit together in the heavenly place before you get there. Paul said we sit together in heavenly places. A heavenly place means there's joy, there's peace, there's happiness, there's love, there's, <laughs> there's commitment and dedication and unity. Yes. Somebody said so many people divided. How many know he can resurrect this division right now? This dead division. He can resurrect it right now. Ain't God all right? 
Yes. And now he says to them, I am the resurrection and the life. I'm your life right now. I am your life right now. You need joy. You need peace. You need the Holy Ghost. I move on you right now. You don't have to wait till you get heaven to worship and somebody. And when I get to heaven, I'm going to sing and shout. Won't be nobody up there to put me out. And you put me down every Sunday. Say, when you going to stop preaching? I, you get to heaven, you're going to sing and shout. And won't nobody, and you had to turn out of church in 30 minutes. Come on, somebody. We sit together in a heavenly place. You got to worship and praise me. But even though you leave the worship building, you still ought to be praising him on your way home. You ought to praise him in the insides of your own home. In your vehicle, give him a praise. In the grocery store, while you're shopping, give him a praise. How many know you have to praise your way out? Even in the middle of waiting, you got to praise your way. In the middle of waiting, you waiting on something, praise your way. But the main thing, drive me to my next point is he told him, take away. Walks up to the grave, he says, take away the stone. In other words, take away the stone of your mind. Let me bring it home to you. You know why your debt situation is locked up in, in the grave? It's because of your mindset. Your mind is, the stone have gotten in your mind that it ain't going to happen. That stone that says, we did it like that years ago, it won't work. That stone that people bring to you, girl, you can't do that. You can't be this. You can't overcome that. Somebody died with that. Just get your life together. You're going to die. Come on. Move away the stone. Before anything can be resurrected and that dead situation comes to life, you got to move away these stones of doubt. Doubt. The first thing he says to them, if you, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. If you believe he can live, he can live. If you don't believe he can live, he can't live. If you don't believe you can do it, you won't be able to do it. But if you believe you can do it, you can do it. Move away the stone. Somebody shout real loud, we got to move these stones out of the way. When that devil start telling you you can't do it, move away the stone. Oh, cast out every imagination that exalts itself above the wisdom and the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God, I know I have the knowledge of God that all things are possible. So why this devil coming to me with a seed saying it will not happen? Devil, I cast you out. I throw you out of my mind. I am going to believe God. I'm going to wait on God. I'm going to maintain my faith. I will not give up on God because he will come through. Somebody say he will. He will come through. How many know he will come through? I, if he come through for you before? Do I have any hand that have he have ever come through for you? If he brought you out of that, he can bring you out of this. Hallelujah. Ain't God all right? Yes. He said, move away the stone. Then he walks and he began to pray. Let me tell you, when you began to pray, number one thing you got to do, you got to pray in faith. This is how Jesus prayed. He says, Father, you always hear me. L listen to me, folk. He prayed in faith. He said, Father, you always hear me. He didn't say, Lord, please, please, please hear me. He said, Father, you always hear me. Y'all don't hear me. I, I know you always hear me. You, and, I, and I know, Father, that you can do it. Come on, somebody. He walks into the, the, the grave to the, where the stone was rolled away, and he walks in there, and he speaks to it. Let me tell you what you got to do to your dead situation. Start speaking to it. Start speaking to it. He spoke. He said, Lazarus, 
I, I wished I could make it look just like it. I, I, I wished you could get it. I wished I could make you see it. Lazarus, come forth. He's dead now. He's dead. They said, he, everybody's given up. They said to him, it's four days now. He's got to be stinking. It's been some years now, and he ain't come through yet. You think he's coming through? Girl, no. You, you need to give up on that. But he walks into the grave, and he speaks. He says, Lazarus, come forth. Come on, you got to speak to your debt situation, whatever your situation is. You got to learn how to speak to it. And when he had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus. See, don't be scared to let that devil know you're speaking to it. Whatever it is in your life that you need to come out of this dead situation that you've been crying about and then on your tears, on your pillows at night, speak to it. Lazarus, come forth. He is coming forth. Pitch it with me. Wrapped. You know how you do a mommy. Wrap all this stuff. He's wrapped in grave clothing. All the way up, he's coming forth. A dead situation. You know, sometimes when you speak to your situation, it still looks like it's bound and wrapped up and tied up. Come on. It still looks like it's bound, wrapped up, and tied up. And you know that God is trying to do something for you. You can see him doing it, but it seems like it's still wrapped up. Somebody got some stuff right now. It seems like it's still wrapped up. You know he's doing it, but something is... Something is binding it up and wrapping it up and tying it up. Guess what you got to do? You got to speak to that too. You got to speak to all this stuff and say, loose it. He says to them, loose him. Let my blessing go. You got to tell that devil, loose my blessing and let it go. Even though I spoke it, it's like it's living and like it want to come to me. But look, I can't get, just can't get my hands on it. Loose it and let it go. You need to talk this morning. Somebody needs to shout it in your mind. Loose my blessing and let it go. It's, it's all around you. The blessing is all around you, but look like you can't control it, like you can't get it. It's out, it's up, it's active, it's moving. Loose it and let it go. Let me tell you, you got to understand, you have to wait on it. And when you wait on it, and when that time comes, somebody said, when that time comes, it's time to speak. There's a certain time you got to speak to. When the time comes, you got to speak. You got to speak and say, devil, rise up and get out of the way. Loose my blessing and let my blessing go. I waited on God. Why I waited? I've been praising God. Why I waited? I don't know about you, but I praise God in the midst of my waiting. I give him a hallelujah praise. Because in the only way, if I wait on God, I got to act like I already got it. Y'all don't hear me. Whatever I need. I act like I already got it. Yeah, I act like it's already has broke through. Ain't God all right? Somebody here this morning need to act like you already got it. I know you need something dead brought back to life. Something in your life that seems like it's dead. You got to Act like you all ready, brought it back to life. Speak to it. In other words, as you're speaking, seem like it's not coming out. Tell that devil, loose it, and let my blessing go. Ain't God all right? Is it anybody here 
love the Lord. Is it anybody here that know you've been waiting on God? And you wait on him, wait on God. Because sometimes that devil hold your blessing up. Ain't God all right? In the book of Daniel, yeah. Daniel prayed for us. Six long weeks, pray and say, Lord, you said in your word that we were coming out of captivity, but we still bound in captivity. He prayed one week, couldn't get no answer. Got down in me, prayed one more week. Still didn't get an answer. Pray another week. Still didn't get no answer. Pray another week. Still didn't get no answer. Pray another week. Still didn't get no answer. Pray one more week. And about the end of that week, he was praying with his face on the ground. Some angel came and touched him on the shoulder. Said, oh, Daniel, man of God, stand on your feet. Ain't God all right? Daniel turned around and looked at the angel. Said Daniel, God heard your prayer from the first day you prayed. When you prayed that first Monday, He heard your prayer. But I came with an answer for you. But the Prince of Persia and all his demons withstood me. I had to go back. And get some more wings. Ain't God all right? Something was blocking your blessing. Something was stopping me from getting to you. But if you stayed, but the good thing you did, you stayed on your knee. You waited on God. Ain't God all right? You waited. And I got an answer for you. Stand up, stand up, Daniel. He strengthened Daniel. Oh, Lord, ain't God all right? See, when you come through, won't God strengthen you? Yes, he will. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Look at Lazarus coming out of that tomb. That dead situation. Loose him, let him go. Ain't God all right? I see your blessing coming out right now. I see your joy coming out right now. I see your child getting victory right now. Somebody say, yeah, say, yeah, say, yeah. Ain't God all right? If you know he's been good to you, say yeah. If you know he will come through for you, wave your hand. Won't he come through? Won't he come through? Won't he come through? He's breaking books right now. He's loosening the bound right now. He's setting free right now. Yeah, no. Somebody just wave your hands and tell God thank you right now. Tell him thank you right now. I've been through a lot. Yes, but I found out. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. Oh, 
I need somebody to say that with me. I don't mind waiting. Lift your hands and say that. I don't mind waiting. I'm waiting on the Lord. I, I, I believe I said that one more time. Don't mind waiting. Don't mind waiting. Oh, the Lord. I, I, I wonder if anybody here don't mind waiting. If it had to be 20 years, I wait on him. Come on, come on. Don't mind waiting. Don't mind waiting on the Lord. Just lift your hands right there and just tell him, I don't mind waiting on you, God. Say, I'm waiting on you, God. Is it anybody here waiting on him? Is it anybody waiting on him? You don't mind waiting on him. Just wave those hands and say, you don't mind waiting there. He will come through for you. I mean, he know he'll come through for you. He'll make a way for you. Yes, yes, he'll, he'll, he'll bring back to life that dead situation. I mean, he got a dead situation. Why don't you jump two times and say, it's coming back to life. Oh, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't mind waiting on him. And while you're waiting, you got to praise your way out. Somebody said, praise your way out. Praise your way out. Praise, praise, praise your way out. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He's good, he's good, he's good. Yes, yes, yes. Don't give up on God. Don't lose hope. Don't throw in the towel. Because God, even though it seemed like he ain't there right there when you thought he should be, he's always on time. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for every soul that's assembled in this place. Right now, God, we ask you to move in a special way. Not only those that are similar here, but those who are watching. Oh, God, right now, in a mighty way, move on their behalf. Come on in right now, God. Come on in. Touch and bring deliverance. Set free. Oh, God, bring back to life some things that someone has almost given up on. 